Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I believe you can hear me from where you are. Just confirm that you can hear me, please. Uh, I want to welcome you all uh, to this particular session as uh, we are going to as I will take you through this course. Uh, the name of the course is Business Data Analytics. As my colleague has mentioned, uh, data analysis is so critical. And as we speak, we have quite a number of organizations that are sitting on data, which is so, so vast and it can actually help the organization to study, to analyze, and also to make use. So you'll allow me to just do an intro and again, allow me to share my screen so that I can take you through the course. So thank you. My name is uh, Wycliffe Mutuli. I'm a specialist in this area of data analytics. And I believe as you'll be taking this course, uh, basically you are going to learn more. And I also want to emphasize what my colleague has mentioned that uh, this is actually a new course that uh, CASNEB has introduced. And again, for those who are eligible to do this course, uh, the graduates and also former uh, uh, and also those who have the CPA application and uh, probably they also want to venture into this new field. Uh, it is critical that uh, we learn data analytics because uh, data Just a minute, I share my screen again. Allow me to share my screen once more. Okay, thank you. Uh, I was, as, as I was uh, mentioning that uh, this is a new course and uh, those who are eligible, they are graduates as well as uh, graduates in any field, whether engineering, ICT, HR, business management, or any other field that uh, uh, a candidate qualified for. Then uh, number two is that uh, all the CPA graduates, they are also eligible to undertake this course. Uh, briefly, I'll just take you through the introduction of the course and probably the expectation. And uh, this is purely from, uh, this is purely from CASNAME. Uh, business data analytics is a new course that requires candidates to demonstrate the use of information technology to support decision-making through business analytics. Uh, the candidate is expected to demonstrate digital competency in preparing and analyzing of financial statements, which will, will also aid forecasting 
and related areas in data analytics. This course requires candidates to have hands-on experience in Microsoft Excel. And as we mentioned that uh, we are actually going to take you through advanced Microsoft Excel. And also the course stated that uh, you need an understanding of uh, R programming application. Uh, part of the course expectation is that, uh, that you are going to acquire the fundamental skills of uh, big data analytics. That is a cross industry standard processing for data mining framework. Then you also expected to apply the data analytics in, prepar in preparation of financial statements with the ability to perform business uh, forecasting. You also need to apply the data analytics in financial management principles that include time value for money analysis, evaluate capital projects, carry out sensitive scenario analysis, uh, present information using dashboard. Remember, dashboard is a, a critical component in data analytics simply because uh, when, you, when you visualize data or when you view data in a graphical point of view, you actually will be able to make insights or you can actually be able to pick some trends. And like if data is uh, presented uh, in, uh, in figures. Then another aspect is that uh, you apply the data analytics in management accounting to estimate product cost but even analysis, budget preparation, among others. You also apply the same skills in performing uh, auditing techniques, which include uh, fraud detection, testing of controls, ETC, and also validation issues. So when we'll be looking at uh, advanced Microsoft Excel, you'll actually be able to see how we have the, the controls that you can use to detect, uh, to detect fraud, to de uh, detect, uh, to to tell about controls, among others, including the, the validation. Uh, basically, uh, the first unit or the first topic is introduction to Excel. And uh, I'm just going to give a highlight of uh, what you should expect as you enroll for this course. Uh, part of the introduction, uh, part of the first topic that is introduction to Excel, you are going to cover the following, basically the understanding of Excel, including the keyboard shortcuts. So we'll be discussing quite a lot on the keyboard shortcuts. You'll also learn about the lookup function, that is the V lookup, the H lookup. You'll also learn about the if function for decision making. We use a lot of if functions for making decision, whereby if scenario A happens, then you go for scenario B and all that. So we'll also be looking at the if functions. And more so, we'll also be looking at what we call the nested if functions. Probably you have more than two scenarios that are you are testing. Then there's also application of index and match function. For the people who are doing reconciliation, it's important that you understand the index and the match function so that you'll be in a position to do reconciliations. Then there's also the use of uh, text functions, functions to manipulate text strings. Then there's also dynamic date functions such as uh, edit, end of month function, dated if, among other functions. Then you also have the financial functions, the PMT, uh, ATC, conditional aggregate functions, uh, we're also going to look at uh, data consolidation from different worksheets, whereby we'll be able to consolidate or to match data from different worksheets. We'll also be able to look at uh, data visualization. As I mentioned, that uh, when uh, you have data and you are able to visualize the data in a graphical format, it is possible for you to, to actually understand the trends. You can simply look at the, the, the graph, then thereafter you, you also make insight. We'll also be looking at uh, charts like the win-loss charts, the sparkle line charts, among others. Then there's also a critical element of uh, macros. Uh, that is uh, the VB element of it, uh, using the uh, VBA to add interactive features for user-friendly dashboards. Then you'll also have a bit of uh, data cleanup using the Power Query and also the use of the data functions, the pivot tables and the pivot charts whereby you summarize uh, large data into data sets that you can easily make insights. And at this point, I will also want to mention that uh, a number of accountants uh, or uh, people who work 
who generate reports from the co-banking systems or from the systems that we use at work, we are, we are only limited to the reports that we generate. But of course, one of the critical component is that the reports that you generate from the system, if you push the same reports into Microsoft Excel, then you'll be able to make more insight. You can now analyze that data so that at the end of the day, you can be able to, 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 to pick up some trends. Because I know what usually happens is that uh, we just get the reports, then we present the reports as they are without necessarily probably getting some insights. Then there's also the, another element of uh, what if analysis for simulation and for decision making. Uh, I remember when you are doing fo uh, forecasting, sometimes it's important to, to be able to understand um, different case scenarios. Like for example, now, if you want to make a decision and probably you have the past data, like for example, an organization might have been making decision without necessarily referring to the data that they have. So it's important that uh, once you analyze the data, you will also be in a position to make well-informed decisions. Then we have the data analysis uh, that is with the statistical functions, the correlations, regression, uh, t-test, p-test, among others. Then there's also the element of automation with VB macros. Macros is actually a critical component in Microsoft Excel. In that macros, they will help us to automate tasks that are performed repeatedly on a daily basis. Uh, uh, when uh, you develop macros in Excel, basically what you are trying to do is that uh, you automate ta uh, tasks that you perform on a daily basis, you automate them so that uh, uh, if you are to generate a certain report, probably with the macro, you can be able to get that report within the very, very short time. And all that I've mentioned under these are uh, Microsoft Access, uh, Excel, sorry, remember we are going to do practicals. And uh, just a rider on that, that, uh, the, the, that uh, the course requires candidates to have the basic knowledge of Microsoft Excel. So in order for you to benefit from uh, this course, as well as from the Microsoft advanced tool that we're gonna use, it's important that uh, you, you make sure that you have hands-on experience in uh, Microsoft Excel. And probably in a scenario whereby you don't have the skills, then I will advise you that uh, as soon as possible, it, uh, you, you really need to acquire the skills so that uh, as we'll be discussing all these functions and application areas, you'll be in a position to, to understand. Then uh, there's also uh, an element of R programming as uh, the curriculum uh, stated. Uh, but uh, we are not going to do the advanced art, but uh, of course we'll only be able to introduce you to, to basic uh, functions of R. Uh, that is just calculations in R. Probably we'll also introduce you to uh, a bit of data structures, the vectors, the lists, the matrices, and uh, data frames. So basically here we'll uh, just introduce you to the, to the basic R. But of course, there's also a writer that candidates can pursue a full course in R later at their own pace. And I remember what we'll be doing in uh, Microsoft uh, Excel, the same can be done with R. But of course, now when you are choosing a, an, an, a tool for that analysis, then probably as we'll be learning uh, the, throughout the course, you'll be able to now to tell which one is more appropriate for the scenario that you have at hand. Uh, the second topic, it's about data analytics, and uh, basically we'll be looking at the data concepts. Uh, we'll also be looking at the stages in a uh, data life cycle, that is uh, identifying the data source, modeling data requirements, and up to the removing of what? Data. Then there's also the element of uh, uh, the, the, that is the big data and data analytics. We'll be looking at the five the definitions of the big data, the five Vs of data. I will be looking at the types of uh, data. I will also be looking at uh, the tools for data analytics. 
And here we have quite a number of tools. We have the tools for data cleaning tools. We have the data management tools. We have the reporting and visualization. So like the tools that we have, they're actually applicable in different scenarios. If you want for reporting or for visualization, if you want for data cleaning tool, if you want for data management, then we'll actually be discussing all this. Then there's also the data visualization in Excel, which we are going to do it practically. We'll be looking at uh, how to do it and how to do the interpretation. Then there's all the element of financial accounting and reporting. And of course, for, for the candidates who don't have the, the financial accounting knowledge, uh, so you don't need to worry, but I will take you through on how to, basically how to interpret the accounts on, and also how to do their analysis and how you'll also be able to do uh, the data visualization and dashboard for reporting purpose. Uh, there's also the financial management bit, that is the time value for money, the loan amortization schedule, project evaluation, and also you carry out as uh, you carrying out sens sensitively analysis and scenario analysis in project evaluation. Uh, that analytics is actually critical, especially when you are managing projects and you, you really want to get more insights on how to carry out that. Then there's the element of uh, management accounting, that is estimate cost of product, uh, estimate price, revenue and profit margins, carry out break-even analysis, budget preparation and analysis. Then uh, finally, we also have the auditing under that bit. So you'll also look at the, you carry out the three-way data matching, fraud detection, test controls, carry out audit sampling from large sets of data, among others. And there's also the element of uh, those ones who are in the taxation or uh, this, the taxation and public financial management. I will also be able to compute tax payable for individual and for companies, prepare a wear and tear. And uh, of course, we'll, also, we'll all be doing this using the statistical functions in uh, Microsoft Excel. And at the end of the day, we'll actually be able to pick insights. And again, one thing that I, I, I didn't mention is that uh, when you'll be doing your exams, remember 75% of uh, the entire course, uh, actually the better percentage they'll be asking about the practical bit. So it's important that, uh, as I mentioned, we, are, we acquire the, the skills that are required so that as uh, we do the course, you, you'll have the hands-on experience of doing the same. And when it comes to the practical, then uh, of course, you'll also be able to, to apply the skills. Then of course, finally, we'll be looking at the emerging issues in data analytics. And uh, one of the critical issues that I will be looking at is the ethical issues, the challenges to do with data analytics, data security, stroke data protection. And of course, uh, as we speak, uh, we are all aware about the data protection law. Uh, actually, this law, we call it Data Protection Act 2019, which was uh, enacted uh, on 25th November 2019. Basically, the Data Protection Act uh, requires that, uh, that uh, as an institution, yeah, when you are processing data, you make sure that you you collect data which is uh you collect data with a very very specific reason or purpose you collect data that is adequate and it's also limited you don't over collect data you make sure that you only collect data that uh you require and also some the another aspect is uh you secure the same you secure the same the same data so these are part of the the discussions that I will be doing in uh, this particular unit or, or on uh, data analytics. Then on the element of data security, remember the data that we hold is very, very vital. It is the most critical asset that uh, any organization can basically rely on. Uh, think of a scenario whereby uh, an organization happens to lose data. Yeah, initially before the 
introduction of information systems of the, the ERP systems. Organizations used to survive on uh, manual data, but where we see today, all the organizations, as we speak, they rely on uh, data that is in digital form for daily processing, for reporting, and also for decision making. So as we learn about data analytics, it's important that uh, we also learn the aspect of uh, security, how to manage security for the same data. Like for example, now we know that the systems that we have, for example, before you log into a system, you'll be given, uh, you, you need to have a password and there are scenarios whereby for you to log into a system, uh, probably you will also need a two-factor authentication whereby after you log in, an SMS will be sent to your device that is uh, maybe a mobile phone with uh, an OTP that is a one-time code. Then thereafter you log in. Uh, there are also other control measures to do with the access control. Maybe from an ERP, there's uh, what we call the rights. Uh, you find that uh, users, they are given a right to access data. And uh, there are some users who are given a limited rights simply because probably they don't need to, to access much of the data unlike the other users. So those are critical areas that I will also be, be covering. So just allow me to, somebody speaking? Okay, just allow me to, uh, just allow me now to, to do the, the introduction that is to data analytics. And I probably we need to understand what data analytics is. And I have quite a number of statements that is uh, business analytics is the interactive methodological explanation of organization data with an emphasis on statistical analysis. Remember the big data, the data that we have, the data that we store in our servers, the manual data that we have, this data is critical. And at one point we need to come up with the methods whereby we can explore the data, we can uh, analyze it so that we can be able to make insight. Business analytics is used by companies that are committed to making data-driven decisions. Remember where we are, quite a number of organizations, uh, actually, the, especially the ones that are, are data-driven, in other words, they make decisions using the data that they have. Uh, an example, for example, let me use an example of uh, probably a company like Safaricom. Uh, before they launch a new product, uh, before they, they come up with any decision, probably what they usually do is that uh, they look at the previous data that they have, they analyze the data, then thereafter they are able to, to come up with insights before they make any decision. Uh, a good example is like the fintechs, the companies that uh, do mobile money lending. You understand they're already connected with the, the CRB, that is the Credit Reference Bureau. And I, I'm told that, uh, or you, you are aware that uh, before they give you a credit facility, they actually do a bit of analysis on uh, your personal record, how you have been repaying your loans, and uh, again, before they increase your limit, they'll also be able to probably to get insights from uh, your previous uh, engagement with them, how fast you have been paying. For example, if you have not been paying those loans on time, you realize that uh, uh, you will not be able to, you are, you are maximum, probably your limit will not be incremented. So that is actually just one of the critical component of data analytics whereby you analyze data before you make any decision. You can imagine now uh, for those uh, organizations that probably they don't, uh, they're not data driven. So sometimes you make decisions, but you don't have the backing, whether the, the decision that you are making is data driven or uh, probably it's just a decision that uh, probably you are, you are just deciding to make it. But if you make it from a data-driven point of view, then it means that uh, you, you, you will not go wrong. Remember, our, there are a number of companies that launch products, then probably one month down the line, 
they recall the product simply because what they thought the product will do, it is actually not uh, what the, the market says. So it's important that uh, we understand data analytics and at any given time, uh, we be also able to analyze the same then thereafter we use it for making decision. Uh, business analytics is the study of data through statistical and operational analysis, the formation of predictive models, application of optimization techniques, and the communication of the results to customer and business partners. Uh, it's important that uh, when you are doing uh, business data analytics, uh, the moment you, you actually apply the analytical tools of the same data, you come up with a model, you apply it. It's also important that you communicate the results to the customers or to the business partners. Like for example, uh, during the, just the last concluded uh, election, actually we used to get updates like um, after like the people who voted, the percentages and all that. And uh, this one is very, very critical. Because even for purposes of planning for future elections, we find that uh, they will plan from an informed point of view. Uh, then the, the question here is, why study data analytics? Because uh, it's important that as we do data analytics, we also need to understand why we should do data analytics. And uh, let me say that uh, uh, for companies that are data-driven, uh, data analytics uh, will make a company make profits. Remember the decisions that are made, they are data-driven for you to make profits you need to understand uh, your trends so that at the end of the day, you are able to make the right decisions. Uh, business analytics will also help you to come up with a plan based on the past performance and the plans that you come up with, they will definitely be successful. And also when we want to derive solutions from the big data that we have, from the large amount of data that we have, once we analyze and uh, we come up with the, the conclusions, I will also be able to drive solutions. Uh, there's a time one of my friends, one of my colleagues was, uh, was just trying to share with me like, uh, in the industry of mobile banking. Uh, if you're a banking institution, there's an element we talked of uh, reconciliation. Uh, when you have large amount of data and probably this data, you need to organize it, you need to summarize it to an extent that you can be able now to make conclusion. Like for example, now in a scenario whereby you are offering a number of loans through the digital uh, platform, probably at the end of the month, uh, you'd be able to get reports from the ERP that uh, probably we issued uh, this amount of money for, uh, for loan A, B, C, or D. But again, from, um, from uh, data analytics, you'll also be able to get insight. For example, when are the peak periods? Yeah, remember now these loans require, you need, uh, you need cash so that you can be able to pay all these loans. Then again, now for you to, to plan, you need to understand the trends. Like for example, now what are the peak periods? So that for the team that is uh, giving out the loans or the team that is maintaining the float where the money is being disbursed to the applicant, they are actually aware that uh, these are the critical debts. We expect probably to issue this X amount of money. And like in a scenario whereby you don't have any insights about the data. So what happens is that you just wait and see. So you find that there are scenarios whereby um, you will run short of uh, cash because probably you didn't foresee this happening. 
and uh, that is why it's important to have this statistic. Like for companies, especially towards the end of the year during uh, Christmas seasons, they have uh, actually studied the trends. So you'll find that uh, most of the supermarkets, they already have stock. They will actually not run out of stock simply because now customers, there are so many number of customers who come in and probably purchase. But for such firms that uh, don't have statistics, they will actually go out of stock. Yeah, so it's important that uh, once you understand the trends, you can plan well in terms of cash flow, in terms of investments, among others. Uh, then finally, uh, when we talk of data analysis and data analytics, uh, we have actually we have actually looked at the tools and uh, these are just but some of the the tools that uh, we can use to analyze our data and of course as we'll be taking the course we'll be categorizing them uh, how they are classified and one of the tools is uh, microsoft that is uh, ms sql w Click View, Power BI, Python R, MS Excel, uh, MicroStrategy, SaaS, Rapid Mine. Then, uh, when you look at application area for data analytics, uh, we said that uh, data analytics is wide. Uh, we can apply the same skills in marketing, can apply the same skills in finance, in audits, in human resource, in manufacturing. And again, I'm saying that any organization that is data driven, it actually uh, writes on uh, data analytics so that they are able to make insights. And uh, finally, uh, we're going to look at uh, data analytics challenges. Remember, when you're doing analytics, sometimes it's not easy. And that is why some organizations, they have quite a lot of data, but again, you find that uh, they, are not, uh, they are not benefiting from this data. And uh, where we sit, we also need to understand why a number of organizations, they're not able to probably adopt the, probably they are, they are, they are encountering challenges in terms of, uh, uh, adopting data analytics. And uh, one of the key factors is uh, managing vast amount of data. Uh, companies have quite a lot of data, especially those ones who have uh, digitized or those ones who are using the ERPs. You find that you might be having information for the last 20 years. And uh, this data is so big, it's so much that at one point, you may not, you, when you want to do an analysis, you, you may not really be in a position because the data itself is so much. But of course, it's also possible just to do samples uh, whereby you just take uh, sample data that thereafter you, you are able to, to analyze it, then uh, you come up with insights. Then there's also the element of lack of data visualize, visualization tools. Probably you have the data, but you lack the tools to do the visualization. We're not able to see this data from a graphical point of view, whereby you can uh, actually be able to see trends. Remember data that is presented in a graphical format. Uh, you can easily internalize the data. You can easily understand the data just by the, by way of just looking at the data. But if you are given data which is in raw figures, then it's, it, 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 it will not really be easy for you to, to do the interpretation. Probably you might need again to subject the same data to some sort of um, analysis. Probably you sort it from ascending order or uh, probably you filter it so that you make insight. But once you have the data which has been analyzed and probably you have the data visualization tools, like MS Excel, then you'll actually be able to make more insights on that. 
then there's also poor selection of the right analytical tools. Uh, like we have mentioned that uh, we, we not only have Microsoft Excel as a tool for data analytics, but again, we also have quite a number of tools. So sometimes you may take a tool that is a bit complex, and at the end of the day, you may not really be able to, to derive more meaning from the data that you have analyzed. So again, when it comes to selecting the right analytical tool is critical, a tool that you understand, a tool that will aid you to achieve the objective that you want to, 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 to achieve at the end of the day, so that as you make decisions, you'll actually be making decisions from an informed way. Then there's also what we call the low quality data. Sometimes remember the, quality, the data that we collect, it will basically have a lot of meaning. Like in a scenario whereby you are, you are collecting data through questionnaire and uh, probably the people who are responding to the questionnaire, they are not giving you the, the correct data, you know, data that probably when you analyze, you find that uh, again, is not really giving you the pointer. So the moment you get low quality data, of course, when you analyze the same data, you will not really be able to uh, to make more insights, probably you will not be able to, to achieve what you want to achieve, especially in a scenario whereby probably you want to make a decision. Like for example, now take a scenario whereby uh, you are a financial institution and uh, you send out a questionnaire to, to, to customers and probably you want them to respond to a number of uh, questions like uh, the quality of services, the products they have uh, subscribed to, maybe the maximum loan they have ever taken or the maximum investment they have ever done with the institution. And probably they don't give you the real data. Probably a member who has a client who has taken a, a loan of uh, 10 million is just saying that uh, the maximum loan that I took is probably 2 million. So probably now when you are doing the analysis, you realize that uh, you might not actually be able to get the the right, uh, the right results. So as we analyze data, let's make sure that uh, the, the quality of the data that we collect, uh, it's actually of high quality so that at the end of the day, we are able to make uh, the correct predictions, the correct application of the same. Then also there's uh, the issue of uh, skill sets. Uh, as we speak, uh, right now, a number of institutions they are actually sending their staffs to do data analytics because they realize that uh, there's a lot of data that uh, organizations are holding. But again, this information or this data, it has really not been, uh, it has not really been uh, analyzed. And that is why our partner CASNEB or uh, basically CASNEB, they have come up with this course that uh, learners or uh, the candidates they can study uh, what data analytics is, how to apply the, dat the data analytics, and uh, probably thereafter they'll apply the same same tools in the organization. And uh, once the same skill sets are acquired, then of course it means that uh, the organizations will uh, actually benefit. Uh, if we lack the the skill sets, then that one is a challenge. And of course, uh, what is currently trending is the, the data science. So this is actually an interesting uh, course that uh, you really need to take. You need to have the right skill sets. You need to have the practical skill sets so that uh, you, you don't encounter these challenges. Then there's also the issues of uh, budget limitation. Remember, all these things can, on, can not only be done free of charge, but uh, it requires a budget to be set. And uh, probably to some institution, uh, they may not really be able to get the budget to be able to do that analysis. Uh, they may not really be able to have the funds to undertake this process of collecting, organizing, analysis, cleaning, and coming up with the, the end results. So for the managers, uh, for the senior staff, it's important that uh, you support budgets, especially related to, to business data analytics. 
because the end results, it means that uh, the organization will benefit. Then there's also lack of the data culture. Yeah, and, and I mentioned that uh, most of the organizations, they don't have this data-driven culture. So what basically happens is uh, wait and see. Probably they just uh, rely on what the customers will do. Probably, of course, I, I, I know there are those, uh, what we call the targets. Uh, but uh, the targets, as we set the targets, we also need to set the targets driven by data. Like for example, now you, when you are doing the targets, you need to look at the, the previous uh, trends. Then you come up with like, for example, the revenue growth. Before you say that uh, this year we are now going to grow revenue by this much, then you must have insights how or uh, why you are choosing the growth by this particular percentage. So that at the end of the day, you can uh, actually pin down, uh, for example, if all factors are held constant, we expect that particular growth. But probably if there are other underlying factors that might, uh, might come up, then it means that uh, the same will not be achieved. But of course, from, uh, from a financial planning point of view, uh, your work will be done that uh, you projected this growth based on these statistics, and uh, that one, it will be important. And uh, finally, there's the element of data security. Yeah, so data security is critical. Uh, as we drive or as we do this data analysis, the data that we collect, remember it's critical, it must be secured. And I also mentioned, and we're also going to learn about the data protection and data security. And I also highlighted that uh, as we collect this data, let's make sure that uh, the data is uh, secure. The data that we're collecting is specific to the purpose. So. The Data Protection Act actually demands that when you are collecting data from customers, don't collect data that you're not going to use. So you collect data that uh, you're going to use that is sufficient, that is going to enable you to achieve the, the objective that you want. And of course, uh, the data you are collecting, let it be transparent among others. So that is uh, just the introduction for today, uh, for the course that I will actually be taking. As uh, my colleague has mentioned that uh, we're now going to have classes beginning uh, tomorrow. Uh, I will uh, rest it at that point. Then I'll just give my colleague now to pick it up from there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh... Mr. Wickley, maybe you can take up a few questions from our colleagues. I think uh, they can actually admit themselves. As usual, we normally have interactive class. Eh? Well done, Langat is one of our students is very much aware of that. We normally have interactive classes. So you're welcome to ask questions uh, that relate to this or any other question that relate to custom and the unit. So a few of you have asked questions. Uh, one was asking about the fee, which are 10,000. 10,000 includes the whole cost coverage, that is the syllabus, uh, plus uh, revision. We shall be revising, of course, the last paper sitting, plus the pilot paper. Uh, we shall also do a mock paper at the end, just to prepare you well uh, before you beat the main exam. And so we need to uh, clear the syllabus in time, on time, so that we can be able to even revise the mock itself. The next question was about the whether data is a science, data science is a course. Uh, maybe we think you can assist us on that. Is data science a course on its own? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I mentioned that. Uh... Currently, organizations, they are moving towards uh, data science. So data science actually is a course, and uh, that is why you, you, I mentioned that uh, CASNET, they're also introducing uh, this unit or this course as a course on its own. But again, I believe probably in future, they might add some few units here and there, but uh, let me not preempt that uh, that is gonna happen but data science is a course on its own. 
And uh, basically what we are, we, we are covering here, it's just part of what is covered in data science. And again, you find that uh, in data science, they will cover quite a number of tools. Probably one of the main tools they'll cover is uh, Python. They'll also cover um, MSSQL. They'll also cover R among other units that are actually are critical when it comes to data analytics. And I also mentioned that uh, for the purpose of this course, uh, they only mentioned that uh, we need to have skills in uh, MS uh, uh, Excel. And also they also mentioned about R. And I said that uh, we are also going to have at least a basic intro to R, whereby we look at a few concepts here and there. So data science is the course on its own. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Peter. Peter is also my former student. Peter is asking, is there a need for doing advanced Excel separately, given that there is, uh, given that uh, what is covered here, given what is covered in uh, business data analytics? I don't think there is a need, Peter, because uh, basically uh, business data analytics is quite advanced. And uh, our lecturer here is going to give you knowledge in advanced Excel. So basically what you need in advanced Excel is going to be covered here. So this one is inclusive. Uh, Somebody is asking, Weldon is asking, after this paper, is there a need to do diploma in data analytics by Kasneb again? I don't think that there is need uh, because already you have the knowledge and you have the certification. Maybe any other question for those who are not doing CPA, do we have them in the house? Uh, you can take up this one, uh, Mr. Weekly. Somebody is asking, which software do we need uh, for this unit? I know the last time when they are doing this, they were basically using Excel. Uh, maybe you can advise on this. Do you have a different software? Yes, I mentioned that uh, the curriculum stated that we need two softwares, that is uh, Advanced Excel and R. And in my introductory remarks, I mentioned that uh, we're also going to do R. But of course, if you compare the application of MS, Excel, and R, you find that uh, Excel is the core. So we are going to do those two, R and uh, MS, Excel. OK, that's well answered. Uh, Jefton is asking, do you also offer advanced Excel? Because from the explanation, it is a must that you must know a little bit of Excel and how much you charge. Yes, we have advanced Excel separately. Of course, here we're going to use, uh, we're going to give you training on the basic of advanced Excel so that you can be able to understand. Because advanced Excel is just the beginning of this data model, data, data analytic thing. So we have to give you a brief of that. But if you hunt uh, advanced Excel in detail, then we have a separate unit uh, course in that, which gets certification. That one we charge 8,000 separately. But here you'll also get, we'll do a little bit of advanced Excel to make you understand the key areas, right? Any other question? How about Power BI? Or maybe you can talk about, just tell us a little bit about Power BI, Mr. Weekly. Okay, thank you. Uh, I mentioned that uh, the tools that uh, we are basically going to learn uh, outside Excel and R, we're only going to learn about the features. Like for example, what is Power BI? What are the features? And probably the purpose. But in terms of the hands-on experience, we are not going to go up to that level. But as you have mentioned, uh, this is a separate course that uh, one can uh, actually enroll for and uh, he can be given the, 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 the whatever. Because it's actually an application package. So you can register it as a separate course after this, then you, you take it. Thank you. Welcome, uh, that's good. So is there any question? Uh, we have students here, Muticia. We have Joel, any question? Just for clarification before we start. So we said that classes are starting tomorrow and we hope that you guys are going to come. It's very important that you get the basic from uh, the word go. We also allow installment payment. You can do half, maybe like 5,000 so that you can start as you prepare uh, for uh, the next installment. So don't get scared that you want the full payment. Just do a commitment fee and then we start. How much do you charge for advanced Excel? That one I've said 8,000. 8,000 for advanced Excel. It is a different unit um, in, on, on its own and it is getting a certification on the same. Any other question? You can also unmute yourself. For those who are
Oh, somebody is saying that sound has a problem. Oh, I was saying that uh, for the new student, sorry, sorry for that. For the students who have just joined, my name is Mr. Dennis. I teach advanced level, yeah, right? Advanced FM and auditing. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Wycliffe here, who will be taking us through data analytics. And initially, when we were starting, I said that this unit is very important for you in whatever field you are in. So it is not a must that you have to do CPA, right? You can just register and do data analytics only. So today it is being applied by those who are in engineering, those who are in HR. Like yesterday, I got a call from a student in HR and he has actually registered already. So we are going to start classes tomorrow. It's very important that you get it from the time of the start so that uh, you're not learning behind, right? Uh, if there is no any other question, we can stop from there. I wish you all the best. Those who are waiting for results, you can give commitment fee like 5,000 so that we start as you wait for the result, right? Thank you so much. Uh, hope there's no other question. Have a good night. Question. Okay. Oh, somebody's asking when will the results be out? Uh, uh, we expect them to be out anytime from tomorrow, but most likely uh, before Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday there. All right. Any other question? Will 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 someone be studying business business data analysis while doing CPA? Um, for example, courses they will not allow you to do them concurrently. Casnev is very strict on that. You have to clear CPA first, then you do business analytics. So those who have done CPA can actually enroll. Otherwise, if you join it with us, we shall take you through the syllabus as usual. You, you will be having the content. We'll be giving you videos that you can be able to use and revise and just familiarize yourself and do the exam later. So with us, we can allow you to audition, but CASNEP only wants you to do it once you are done with CPA. Or at least when you are not doing other units with the CASNEP, you need to do it separately as a single paper. Okay, thanks. So can you share the link uh, and the good news with your friends? Let's come and have knowledge, right? So that you can go there and just be different from other candidates in the job market. Remember, this one has been introduced in Kenya uh, through CASNEP, but in other countries like US, go and check Harvard University, our business school, they have been doing this many years, right? So it is only that you're being enrolled here. It is new and it's going to make you marketable. I will really persuade you that you do this, join on time so that you can be able to have the right knowledge from others, right? Thank you so much. There is no question that we can stop. <laughs>